Hi, I'm Bonnie, Log Cabin Stitcher. Welcome to my channel and welcome back to my sewing room. You can follow me on Instagram at Bonnie Log Cabin Stitcher. Oh, this little guy was so happy when I got home after my trip. I was gone for 13 days and he was, he is a rescue dog. He had been abandoned and so it's very hard on him when I, who am his, um, I was going to say his one and only. No, I'm just his special one, just like he's my special one. Um, it's very hard on him when I leave, so I would never leave him at, um, at a boarding facility. So I had my son stay here as a pet sitter, and then when he was working, I have a wonderful pet sitter who comes and stays and visits with him. So he has all known people, but all when I got home, he did not want to let me go. Um, so I'm going to put him down now, but I'm also going to share something. So this is my BenQ light. And I have seen several of us floss tubers sharing about this. So um, I, I was um, asked to do a review and in turn I got a free light. So I, I really have delayed in doing this review both because I really wanted to make sure before I get a lot of requests on my, um, my email. And this is the first one that I have accepted, but I went and I researched because I'm a people pleaser. So if I got something free, a beautiful light, if I got it free, I I would want to say something nice about it. So when, <laughs> when I did finally respond, so I looked at all the reviews about this light. And then when I did finally respond, I said, I would be happy to do this, but um, I will... I will give my honest opinion. And so th that was perfect. That was exactly what they wanted. So I received this amazing light free and um, I will put a link in the description and I will also share about it more on my next floss tube because I am learning about there. There are so many options that this light does that I'm just learning how to use them comfortably. So I'll tell you a little bit about it. I'm going to put a link in the description box. You can go on Amazon and get one. I All I get from this is this beautiful free light and knowing that I was going to give my honest opinion. And I can honestly say I love it. Now I had one of those true color lights, a table one, um, years ago, probably 12 or 13 years ago. And it was great for my embroidery. And that's actually when Ben Q um, contacted me. It was from watching or seeing one of my embroidery videos. And so I wanted to use it in a lot of different light options so I could really tell you what I think about it. Um, but all that to say, there are several different colors. So I know there is a bright blue one. I believe there's a green one. And I was thinking, oh, it looks so modern. Yet, when I have it here in my in my primitive setup, it it blends in with everything that I've got here. I have a lot to share with you. So I am going to show you. I have been stitching almost every single day. I have a lot to share with you. I'm going to share with you about why all these wool projects are here. But let me just take a moment to show you some of the aspects of this light. Now... I know other floss tubers received the same offer that I did and got a free light for um, just simply giving you the review. So I just saw Christy Cross Hatch Quilts um, shared about her thoughts on, on the light and how she loved it. Then Rebecca on Hedgerow Stitching, she did a very thorough review. Then I also saw Kathy Schmidt Stitches. Um, did a review as well. So this is not going to be my thorough review, but just how I've been using it so far and why I love it. So you can see here two things. I wanted you to see now you can see this whole quilt. I have a lot of people. This is, this quilt has been getting a lot of comments and I love, and I'm glad I love it. If you want to know more about it, if you go to my videos, you'll see I did a, a quilt video about it. I talk about it at the very end, but if you click the down, um, the da the area of that gives you the show notes, you'll see it was a combination of two things um, to make up that quilt. But what I wanted you to see is this. Where you see the light, it does have, I call it a duck bill, but because it has, is that convex or concave? I'm not one of those people. 
I think whatever it is, it really shines the light far rather than just the true color that I had that just shone straight down. So this gives a good illumination. It can move a lot, but I want to show you, I was just noticing how bright these blocks are. Not bright in the sense that it's changing the color, but you can really see those colors as opposed to just up above it. The other thing I wanted you to see is this is what I was using when I was stitching last night. I had quite a few hours to stitch. I used this light. You have different light options. There's cool, which this is there, which I call it more of the blue tones. Then you can also touch it and it will go to the warm tones. So like if I was just hanging out in my room and wanting to relax in the evening, I would touch it, which I will in a moment, and show you that it goes to that golden, soft, relaxing color. I see this color as more of a, a stimulating light in the sense that I can see clearly and see well with the stitching. The other thing that, that you can do is you can move this. So let me see if I can show you. So this aspect, whoopsie, this is what I'm not supposed to do. You're not supposed to touch that when you move it. So if I move it, I can turn it this way. It's on a, a ball and joint kind of a swivel, or I can turn it that way to get more light showing on something. Then it goes totally, I can do it up, I can do it down close to me. I can also move it, which is what I'm gonna be doing today, and turn it so it goes over above my sewing machine. So if I'm, if I'm turning it to where you can really see it up, see I keep doing that where I keep touching this. This is how you turn it on and off. It also has a light sensor. So with the ambient room light that you have, it senses where it thinks it should be, yet you can adjust it. So there is adjustment. So that is more of the yellow, um, warmer tone. So if I was just in my room, this is what I would use. Yet when I do my stitching, oh see, it, it has so many options and there it goes back to the, the cool. And then you can simply shut it off by touching that. So it gives many options. I'm going to leave it on and just right there. But when I was sitting and stitching last night, this is my stitching spot. And yes, when I cross stitch, because I cross stitch on 36, and I know I need new glasses. I just haven't dealt with going to get new prescription glasses. I use what I call my perfect stitching setup, which I have a whole video on that. And it is an LED magnifying light. I need that because I believe I need new prescription lenses. And I just, it's just like, if I can put that off, I will. But this light for people, <laughs> for people that have glasses that work, and for people that see well, when I was doing just the embroidery, this was wonderful because I was able to put it down close to where I was. It's very, very easy to move, very easy to adjust. And, um, and you can see, even though it has a bit of that modern look, it fits right in with my room and I, I love it. So all that to say, um, I believe it is a very good value. It is a quality light that comes with a quality price tag. But I used to use, let me show you this one. Um, I had taken this to my dad so I would have a light. I usually used this Ott um, light. And it is one where you do the three taps. And um, But see, it's a straight light. It's an inexpensive light. So I was using this and it was fine. This is magnificent. So this I love. This now is not going to go back there. It's going to go in another room because um, I have my magnificent light. So I'll share more about that next time. Um, and, and this really truly is my honest opinion. Now the next time I, I really want to see how it works at my sewing machine because I have wanted one of those big long lights that go over the sewing machine. Now I have one. So I'm going to be sewing tonight. Um, so there you go. Now on to the stitching Then I'm going to share. I picked up some stuff at, um, at a consignment store and a thrift store and I want to give away from from, oh, my fave, Sylvia, at running with um, needles, needles and scissors. I won a, give, a giveaway. So 
let's just get into this and I'm going to do it because I was I was overwhelmed at the thought of doing a video just because as I'm trying to integrate back into my life here, finish some things up that I need to finish up um, with my father, um, do everything. And my garden, my pet sitter said, uh, your garden got away from you. And I said, oh yeah, oh yeah. So right now I'm looking out before all I could see is weeds. Um, it had gotten really bad, even though my husband was helping me. Um, I, I still, even though I simplified, I still have a considerable garden and now I can look back and, um, and I was wondering why, why I was sore last night. It's because I was weeding. So I have been doing a lot and I'm going to not fill up the show notes this time. Next month. So in May, I'm trying to <laughs> slow down. In May, I'm trying to do a video every week because I'm stitching so many things every week. I also have found out, okay, I haven't even shown you my stitching, but it's coming. I have also found out that I since I'm a process stitcher, I bond with what I'm stitching with. So even though I had that fun idea of planning and gathering, knowing that I was going to stitch at my dad's and knowing that I had all these things that I could work on when each day as I was stitching, I thought, Oh, I just want to keep working on you. I don't want to stitch on a new thing. And then I would get to that next day and stitch on something new. And I thought, Oh, Oh, this is so fun. I want to keep stitching on you. So it it, it is so funny. Um, it was, it was, it's just so funny. So let me show you again. I started a video and then stopped. Um, so I am not going to stop this video. I'm just going to keep going, but it, this is not in an order, but I did have a list and I did stitch all but two days. Um, and because I, this is my second video, I may not have told you, but I had one travel day um, one drive day. And so I didn't stitch that day. And then the day before I didn't stitch because I was helping a friend. So if I shared that already on this video, you know, everything about it. And if not, you can just know I was busy and I did fun stuff. So this is my project bag and, um, I have two projects that are in there. So this is, this is an amazing, this is an amazing linen. So if you can see, it's Cosmic by Dames of the Needle, and I got it on their Etsy site. It was, I think it was one of those limited editions. I don't know, but when I got it, I knew, I knew it was going to be unusual, but I thought, dang, that is really cool. And I am so glad I got it because it is very unusual. There are places of deeper modeling. Um, you know, it looks like one of those oil cloths that somebody used and then left in their garage kind of a thing, but as a primitive stitcher. It is super cool. So let's show you the first project. Now I did one on the on one side and one on the other. So this is just my beginning stitching on. Um, this is a free pattern from the Primitive Hair, and I shared about this already in why I am not going to do Letha. I'm not going to do that wording because it it's a pagan holiday, a pagan celebration. So as a Christ follower, that's not what I'm going to be doing, but I, I love this and I love this. So what I am going to do is use my book that I was gifted by Myrna. Let's see if I can get it out of here without damaging it. Oh, this book, Brenda Keys, um, the ultimate sampler motif source book has tons of borders. So I'm going to choose a border and put that on there after I get the main stitching done. So that way I can see what color and what style, but that was just one evening that I was working on that. And then another evening I did another freebie. So this is, um, this one is, oh, that's my work calling. What do they always call when I'm doing this? So hang, I cannot, I cannot pause. Um, let me, let me check. So, oh, maybe you can just look at that. And I will tell you about my wool along in a moment. Um, okay. Because again, I am not going to stop this video or it will never get done. But I'm going to calm down. I'm going to just be chill. But it, it is weird when you, when you spend a lot of time in one place, then come to another place and integrate things. It is kind of unusual. But this is a freebie 
by Stone Street Stitchworks, and it's called um, Thank Wool. So I'm going to be making a needle book out of it, but I have my start on that. Let me share you, show you again what I'm doing. And it's really interesting because it's like this checkerboard look. And um, in that, the color that I had chosen, because I'm not going to use their colors, I'm going to use my own, um, it was showing up too much as a checkerboard. So I'm going to find another color, but it was that was what I was able to get done one night. So let's put this aside. I don't want to throw it on the floor. Um, okay, then another, another one that I finally worked on again is, I love this fabric. I love... Um, I love just the good colors of Civil War. Uh, yeah, hang on a second. Yes. Um, I love the Civil War reproduction fabrics. And these, I love these muddy kind of brownish tones. So here's my Oh Joyous Day. When I was at my dad's, um, I did a video that I, that I just called... Um, joy nevertheless and it was just for those of those of you that wanted to know more about my trip and what I was going through and how I process um, and about about my mom and dad um, that's a video that's up there and then I shared a little bit about this one but I ended up stitching on this for three different days and um, because I'm a slower stitcher there's there's not a whole lot of progress that I made but um, I found, so this was one of the colors that I was stitching. This is, um, this is camouflage. So when I was doing this, you can kind of see, it's funny cause I, I am addicted to color. And when I was first looking at this camouflage, I, I wasn't that impressed when I was looking at it on the skein, but as soon as I started stitching it, it's like a steel blue that goes into like a tan and, and it was gorgeous. And that's where, as I was stitching the border, I thought, I don't want to stop. I don't want to stop. And so it was fun. I stitched it because because I'm doing this in honor of my mom. And I have a stitch along that I've not been keeping track of. Um, but it's hashtag joy, nevertheless, S-A-L. And so I'm doing it in honor of my mom. Other people that are joining in are doing it in honor of a loved one. And, um, and so I do it on those special days um, that remind me of mom. So I did it on Mother's Day. And I did it on her birthday, was May, or would have been May 15th. I did it on that day. And then I also did it on another day, um, another day that I got home and I was just um, just trying to process all the feelings that I had. So this, this is very good for me and I love the colors. I'm not changing, I don't think I have changed any of the colors so far. I'm doing it on the called for Wren and I am very much enjoying it and I'm seeing a lot of different people finishing it and it's really getting me spurred on to want to stitch on that. So we've got that one and then I I had planned on doing um, some information about a new project bag that I really love and the sizes and all the information. I was going to share about it but it, it's going to be way too long and I was just tired just already thinking about everything that I would want to share. So. I'm going to share more about the project bags um, in June. Um, June will be when Mania is over and I will be able to share with you more. This is a new project bag that basically is the same size as this. So I like things that are a similar size um, because they fit in my basket well. And it has a stiffness that I like and it doesn't bend over at the bottom like these ones. When these are sitting in my basket, they bend over at the bottom. So this is one that I'm really enjoying. So I will share more about those and how I changed it up a little bit because I always change things up. I have two projects in here and I stitched on them both. Now in my floss tube, um, the last one, so it would have been 23, I shared about um, a little bit about the genealogy that I wanted to learn about. So I'm going to do this in honor of my grandmother, um, my dad's mom. And at that day, I thought my dad and I were going to have one full down day where I could just interview him and, and learn more. That didn't happen because I was able to help him with one other complete project. And really in a week's time, 
I had to condense that down to two and a half days. So it was exhausting. I was up late at night um, working on this project. And um, so it, it took what I could have just had as talking to him. That time was gone, but it was something that I was able to do while I was there. So I extended my stay, helped him with another project. Um, so I will just interview him when we do FaceTime. So this is, this is the beginning and I kind of made a mistake. I was exhausted. I was mentally exhausted when I was there. So I just wanted to stitch as a down thing. So it's probably not a good idea to start a project when you can't think well, because I should have, I should have done it long way. So instead I am going to be cutting close. I'm probably going to be doing this myself rather than sending it out for framing. And so I'll, I'll probably make it work. I'm also learning about myself. If I put time into doing something, I don't want to undo it. I will make it work. So I could regret that. I don't know, but then I could just stitch it over again too. So that was my Heartland and that I, it's a 32. So I got this from Hollis Hand Creates, uh, whatever. It's not showing you, but it's Heartland 32 count. So I'm doing two threads over two. Everything else I do is 36 count, one thread over two. So those were my Blackbird projects. And then when I was in Colorado, um, I did those videos and I was so focused on what I needed to do when I was there that I read, it, it was such an important aspect of me when I was there to read all the comments. And I, I would do that several times a day. I didn't even really do the heart because I wanted, I love to respond when I can. I read all the comments and they meant so much to me. And I know when I make, when I leave a comment on somebody else's video, I kind of forget about it afterwards. But if they, they heart it, oh, it's cool. If they respond to it, it's like, oh, that's really neat. So please know, for those of you that leave comments, especially that week that I was at my father's, it meant so much to me. And it was my tie with this part of me. And, and I loved it. So in saying that, I had showed this bag that I was going to be working on. And someone commented and told me a fun story because I said, um, there's a lot of elk in Colorado, but I don't think there's any moose. Or maybe I said there aren't any. Well, she shared that there was. It was a fun story. So I don't know if you read the comments that other people leave, but they are so precious. Um, so yes, there are moose in Colorado. I finally got some work done on this. And I think that was the neat part for me in Mania, even though I, I didn't when I was stitching, I, I thought, oh, I don't want to move on to the next project. Yet when I did, I was like, oh, I'm so glad I got work done on this project. So this is one that I worked on and I didn't get a whole lot done. It was mostly just this area, but um, it was just fun to get it moving. And I remember I was listening. I'm listening to the Anne of Green Gables audiobook collection. So there are, I don't even know how many books there are. I read those all. My mom introduced me to Anne of Green Gables and I have the collection that she gave me and I read them all. But now because I have so many things I want to do, especially stitching, I love the audiobooks. So on iTunes, I purchased the um, Anne of Green Gables collection and it's by Lucy Maud Montgomery. And I am now, so I finished listening to Anne of Green Gables on my trip out there because when I'm home and I listen to it for maybe a half hour, it's hard to really get into it. But when you immerse yourself into the story, wonderful. It makes a very long car trip go very quickly. So I finished Anne of Green Gables right before I got to Colorado. Then I listened to Anne of Avonlea on the way home. Then I listened to Anne of the Island when I got home, and now I'm on Anne's House of Dreams. But I got to tell you, the first three books were, like the person who reads the story, I don't know, the reader, I guess. Whoever is reading Anne's House of Dreams, I thought, I, I don't like that. I don't like to ever say anything bad about somebody, but I thought, I, I, I didn't care for that, that reader. That, no. I didn't care for the voice of that reader. I'm sorry. Um, so anyway, <laughs> anyway, this is my, um, this is, this is something that I'd shared about in 
um, in my January video, but I had done this one. It was a it was a whip that I put in. This is um, uh, Meg Hockley. Who is that? Um, Crab Apple Hill Studios. This this is still available, but I put it in a project book and or a project bag, and I don't even have to put a tag on it because any project that goes in here for a while is going to be a snowman so I don't have to wonder about what's in there. I finally got some work done. So that is the really cool thing about Mania is all the things that I wanted to do I get to stitch. So it's kind of like oh I want to keep stitching and oh it's so fun to go on to the next thing. But this is um oh let's take that note off. So this is Parson Brown and I am doing it on brown browner fabric. So this one is putty and I am using straw bonnet so far. So it is darker and I love it. I love the dark colors. And this, actually this is lighter than what it really is. Um, that's more like what it is. So it's a neat dark and I really wanted it dark. So um, I was enjoying that. Now one night, uh, one night I couldn't sleep when I was out there. And usually if I can't sleep at home, I get up and stitch and I thought, can get up and stitch so I just turned my light on um, it was like two o'clock in the morning and sat up and stitched and did I think it's I think it's the thinking process it's like when you can't sleep and you get up and stitch what I have found instead of thinking I need to sleep I need to sleep it's like okay let's just get up do something get the thoughts usually it's thinking that I need to get out and then I'm ready to go back to sleep and then I stitched um, the next day on that too so there we go I love this fabric and more fabric from my mom. This one, so when I had seen um, Brenda from um, Brenda and the Serial Starter, she had done her Christmas home tour and I saw this and I bought it that day, All Joys for Thine, and I've had it kitted up. I kitted it up right away, but I didn't start it. And then Christy Crosshatch Quilts showed her she had gotten it back from the framer and I thought, oh, I'm going to start on it right away. And I didn't because I bond with what I've already stitched on. Well, I, look at that little tail. Um, I stitched on it last night and, um, and I made a mistake. So because I don't want to unstitch, I made a one, one thread mistake on the border. And I thought, I'm not taking it out. I'm going to make it work. I may regret that later, but it's what I'm choosing to do right now. Cause that's just me. So I know I made a note because that's the other thing. When you're not stitching on something continuously, it's easy to forget. And so I made a note on the chart where I got off on that thread because I'm going to have to make it off also on the top. Um, or I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to compensate for it wherever it is. And then I'm also going to have to know as I do the motif. So might I regret it later? Yes, I might, but I am enjoying it and it is so far all the called for colors. So that is fun. Oh, and it's on my Shanda. It's on my Shanda made these um, thread drop tags for me. So that's another thing. Do, do, do. So we're going to put that away. And okay, so as I was practicing with this light last night with embroidery, so I did cross stitch and I did need my magnifier light, mostly for the magnifier. I need a magnifier. Um, but this was lovely. So it was really funny though. As I was stitching, I had it up. Let's just do it. I had it up like this, um, when I was stitching just to have the light there. And as I was looking, I thought, oh my goodness, it doesn't look good right now. But from, from the position of where I was, when I, I was looking at the thread and one of my mom's orphan blocks, I thought, that color is so gorgeous. It, it, and I thought, I've, I've been looking at that. That's been sitting there for weeks. Um, I thought the color is so gorgeous. It's the light. And that's where I thought, oh, this light is marvelous because it's bringing out those colors. So that was really cool. Side note. Okay. So this is my embroidery project. This is, um, this is, I got it on Etsy and it came, I think from the UK, but it came quickly. Um, the new couch companion, Leanne's house. So I wanted to do it these darker colors and I am, this is some new things because I am using, I am doing the darker colors 
than what it's calling for, but I really wanted to see, can I stitch with that light? And so it was interesting, I stitched one of these. Oh, this one I did just with this light. This one I did stitching with my magnifying light. That was the other thing. I just, I really do want to compare. I want to compare. Now, even though I could see clear, because remember I need new glasses, I could see clearer in with a magnifier. As I compared and looked at the stitches from this and the stitches from this, they're exactly the same. So this really is, um, let me respond back. This really is a neat light um, and a good light. So that's that's what I stitched on last night. So last night I did two projects. I did All Joys for Thine and I did the, the stitching on those. Um, okay, so this is another, this is the same size bag, but this one is more, I was going to say wimpy. It's softer. I like the stiffness of the other one. So again, in June, I'll share more about that and I'll have more bags made. So this is my Winds of Autumn. This is my other stitch along with Celeste from Celeste Creates and Jen from Instagram of the Naughty Oak. So K-N-O-T-T-Y. I finally got some work done on this. Little bit. I got more of the house done. Um, I got these window panes done, but I started taking, I was going to go over this with one more stitch and I thought, well, I don't think I'm going to like that because with variegated thread, that variegation, I think it would just make it look like one solid color. So I'm going to take that out, but I didn't feel like stitching it that night. I just felt like I wanted to do more of the house. So that's why I started stitching on that house, which is kind of funny because as I was stitching on it, that's when I started listening to Anne with Anne's House of Dreams. Didn't even think about it at the time, but if I did, that's for sure why I would have done it. So we got that stitching done. And one other project that I did, so this is a project bag that I had made with scraps, with learning how to box a bottom. And I did some stitching on this quilt. And I stitched on it. I had a whole day that I could stitch and I finished hand quilting this. So my fingers were sore and, but I'm very happy because it was just a wonderful, I really, really had a whole day of just stitching. So I did all the hand quilting on that and now I will do the border. No, not the border. I will do the binding because this is not going to have a border. But this, I will share. I will share more about it on my quilting video. But it's using the six-inch pineapple block foundation paper by Lori Holt. Um, I was going to share more about it. I'll share about that on my quilting because if you're not a quilter, it's not going to be pertinent to you. But that was fun. So that's where I have truly, truly enjoyed all the stitching and feeling like sometimes I think I have a list of all these things I need to do. Well, it was great because mania, it was my own desire to do it, but I needed to stitch every day. So because and I'm looking down at the garden that I still have some weeds to pull, it created for me that cushion of having something that I needed to do that was filling me up. And giving me the mental time. So really, mania is for my mind, and it has been wonderful. I've had some questions. So I think it was on the very, on floss tube number 22, I shared this project bag. And I had opened it up and showed it like this. So there was two things that I had questions on from two different people. People asking, where, where did this pattern come from now? I change everything came from this book and it's a two-in-one project bag but it's called for in a smaller project bag I enlarged it but I didn't enlarge it big enough because I cannot I want to slide a full-size book in and out and I made it one inch too small so again in June I will I would just have a video not a tutorial um, I will do, so some people ask me, because I say I call them tutorials, not tutorials. Um, I will share about needle books and how I do these things, tips and tricks. That will be more about it. But if you want to make something like this, um, this is the Anila Hui stitched. 
I learned how to do the tabs. And honestly, doing this binding was hard because I did not machine stitch it because I was afraid how that would look. And it was hard stitching that on. So I may try machine, machine stitching it on next time. Other questions that I had because I shared about this. Um, so this is my, my um, needle book that I kind of made. But also there was a small needle book that I learned how to make in this. So I, I use this as a complete reference book. Um, so reference book is great and I learned how to do a lot of different things from this. So um, this is, so this is from, it's called Love Palms from Calico Junction. Um, that I will put in the, the show notes. So this was just a completely different project. And then I put it on and I created this size based on the piece of fabrics that I had. So that's, it was kind of my own design. And I think I will just have to do a whole separate video in June, giving more details. That way I can reference back to it. So if you hang tight with me, um, I'll be able to share more details with you. Um, because I'm already thinking about all the things that I need to get to today. Um, here at home. Before I had left, I did, I did some videos and they just didn't work. And so I just stopped them. But in that I was sharing some of my haul. My haul is slowed down a lot. Part of it too, part of it is because my work is slowing down. I'm, I'm very grateful for that. Um, and I'm grateful that I was allowed to work. So I really try to keep that attitude of gratitude. Um, I'm grateful for the work. But I'm also going to be grateful when it slows down a little bit because it's been it's been pretty intense. So um, this is how I keep my projects. If I start kitting them up, but it's not complete and I don't have a project bag, it goes all in here. But of course, you can't see through that. So um, I got this on um, Brenda Gervais Country Stitches Online. This is I saw this on Pinterest. I have not. This is an older pattern. I have not been able to find it anywhere. So I bought it on her website, um, and it even comes with this. So that comes with this. Now, I want it to turn out this size so I can use that. I'm going to be stitching on 40 count. It's ale. So I am going to be stitching on the 40 count ale, and I did get the chili pepper too. So we shall see how that 40 count works for me. Maybe that will actually push me to get uh, my updated prescription for my glasses. Then I had also purchased, I don't, I think, because I did two videos that I stopped. That's why I keep thinking I've shared this, but I think it was on those. Um, I've seen so, um, been so inspired, um, especially by Lisa Abbey, finished this and Summer at Cherry Hill. So when I was watching Lori Holt, she was sharing that she was stitching it and that she had purchased latte. Um, so I, I did it too. Um, so I got, let's, and this is Kitten Stitcher. So I went on Kitten Stitcher's site and I love how she does those tags, but um, I loved, <laughs> I love Lori Holtz. Um, so I got that latte, um, XJU Designs. So I've got latte. So since I was on Kitten Stitcher, I wanted to try some more linens. So I also purchased, um, I purchased Affogato. And I shared that already and my story about Affogato's and what everything has a story, even Affogato. So um, just so you can see, because now I have the two together, maybe I had them both on the other video. My life, it feels like I can't remember anything I did. So latte, Affogato. This is dark and lovely. I love that. Then, I'm, I'm pretty sure I shared this when I was in Colorado, but I didn't have the same lighting. So this is where it's afternoon light coming in my window, which is my preferred way of doing these videos. Also, so I don't have to get my box lights out. So you can see this one is Fresco um, from Picture This Plus. And Hollis Hand Creates is a great place to get um, linens as well. So you can see the color, um, more tan, more what I see is brown and more cream. Then, which one is this? 
that one, that one. Okay, now I don't believe I shared these with you because I didn't want to take everything to Colorado. This one is Bramble, 36 count Bramble. It is lighter, it's very light. So if I usually like stitching on something like this, this is really light. It reminds me though, like in, what is the book? Um, I think it's the Sewing Club, they use Velt a lot. Now the Velt that was used in Sewing Club samples doesn't look like the same very, very green Velt that I'm seeing on websites. So this looks more like it would be, I believe. Um, but again, I'm new to back to stitching, so I don't know all these things, but then this was a shocker. This looked like, so this is what it looked like on the website, Oaken. Um, but I got it and I thought, whoa, that's kind of crazy. That's kind of wild. Mm. So I would like to ask, what would you guys who are much more experienced than me, what might be good I, but see it goes totally with my style that's why I ordered it um, but because it is so very different from other ones that I might stitch with what 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 might you think or what have you stitched on this something because I know this will have a purpose of some project so please I would love some comments on what what you might want to stitch on that then I also got the Mayflower Mocha. So I had referred to that. Let's show you with, let's show you with um, Affogato. So Affogato, similar, just a little bit darker. So Mayflower Mocha, I got a bigger piece of that. So I like that that's darker. It's not as dark as putty though. Then back in November, um, oh, I can, <coughs> dusty. Back in November, I had made an order on traditional stitches and I, I knew it was going to take a while for these linens to come in. So they contacted me last month and they said, did you still want them? I was like, yes, 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 please. So this is vintage meadow rue 36 count. I really love it because it has some plum tones in it and I have um, vintage exemplar that I have a project on and I love it. So that one's vintage meadow rue. This one is even more plum. This is vintage pearled barley. So um, kind of unusual. This one's greener. This one's more pink and plum. So let's compare that to, oh, let's compare that to sand. I, I just have a lot of linens out. So if you know sand, are these all, is sand? Okay, lakeside linens. Okay, these two are lakeside linens and sand is picture this plus. So just so you see, there's some colors. For those of you that are newer like me and want to see the differences, um, but I love I love the primitive. I love the darker. So those are very fun. What else can I share? What else can I share? Okay. Let's take a look around the corner and relax for a minute. Now, um, I love watching and I am a friend of Christy from Daisy K's Primitives. I get so inspired by her decorating. I get so inspired by what she's stitching on and I love how she shows. She does a lot of smalls and she does dough bowls. She, she does displays. She has been in a magazine. Almost every one of her displays looks like it's from a magazine. So I love her Instagram and I love her videos. So she had shared on her last video that she had purchased these. So of course, and I, I sent her a message and I said, look it, um, I wanted to be just like you. So I got these little firecrackers and they were almost out when I ordered these. Actually, I think it was the day I watched her video. I probably paused her and ordered it. So this is from did I put the, it's from the old sap bucket. I'm trying not to crinkle, but where did that card go? Oh, here we go. So this is so the old sap bucket dot Etsy dot com. So old is O L D E. So um, I went on there and there were not very many at that time. So I bought a set of five. So these, the, these are so cute. So it says Liberty. 
and um, these are made, it's it's like a wood dowel with fabric around them and jute sticking out and they are so cute. So when I ordered, because with Etsy a lot of times if you order $35 or more you get free shipping and so to make it $35 um, for free shipping I also got some of this twill tape. Now here's, it, and it's, it's fine but um, they used this, um, you know, these pins that have, um, been, uh, I would call it primatized, uh, whatever, distressed. Um, they used a pin to close it and of course it, it left a little bit of a mark. So it's fine because I like primitive stuff, but I wanted to take it off because I thought, well, I don't know how much more that will change it. So I have that down there cause I'll use that on something else, but I really love, I have some of this already um, distressed, but I like it a lot, so I bought some more. But there you go. So if you want to be just like Christy, you can get those too. So I need to do some stitching. So I got some smalls, but I'm since I'm back into cross-stitching, back into seeing what everybody is displaying and decorating with, because I went from doing um, wood decorations and in that whole vendor world and decoration world for decades in the 80s and 90s and phased out in 2000 um, that because that, I had thought that was going to be my career and it 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 didn't last and so I had to do other things but I got rid of almost all that stuff because that was 80s and 90s stuff so now I, I decorate my room, but I don't have a lot of shelf space, so to put decorations. So now I'm putting those things together and enjoying that. So right now I'm just kind of gathering. But two things, when I was, I want baskets. I would love to find an old dough bowl, um, but I have seen a lot of people use wicker baskets. So I picked this up for $3 um, at a thrift store and I love it. Um, that it is a bit distressed. So I will probably wax it and make it even more distressed. But um, so I will do something fun in this. Christy was asking what I was going to do with it. So that's the size. And I like that it's nice and flat. But this is this is my giveaway. When I won the giveaway, I was in Colorado and I saw because I love watching Sylvia running with needles and scissors. I love her style. She's in her husband stationed in Germany. They're in Germany right now. I love her style and both in chit chat and stitching. And so I commented because she was doing a giveaway from Germany on all these German chocolates and snacks and it was a giant box. And so I won the giveaway and I thought, Oh, it was just so exciting. My heart was beating and I was, and I said, Oh, now I know how people feel when they want to win a giveaway that I've done. So it was, it was very fun. So when I got home, um, that box was waiting for me and, and it is, I'm, I should not be eating sugar. I should not be eating carbohydrates, um, because it just works better with my body when I don't. But when I was in Colorado, I ate what I wanted to. And I thought when I get home, I'm going to get right back on and do my diet. And this box was there and I thought, okay, when the box is empty, I'll go back to not having sugar. So it has been fun. My son was here for a while. And so um, I said, okay, let's get some more stuff. So I bring the basket out. It was kind of like after trick or treat when you were a kid, but I would get the basket out and I'd say, okay, what do you want? And, and this is what this is like. And, oh, look what's inside of this. And so we had so much fun and I have been eat comfort food. I've, I've been fully enjoying it. So it is so, there's not much left. But it is just so fun having something from Sylvia's world because I'm one of her groupies and just seeing neat things from another country. So um, this is going to be one of my treats. I have not had the tea yet because I'm going to eat through all my carbs and then I'm going to go off of sugar. So tea is a great helper for going off of sugar. There was tons of chocolate, cookies, everything. I have eaten. I've eaten a lot. Um, and again, these are, these are going to be a treat when I'm going off of sugar too, but, um, just amazing fun stuff like this. So my dad loves marzipan. So I'm going to send him a care package. I'm going to actually share the marzipan with my dad and just tons and tons of stuff. There was, so it's so fun when you have stuff from other countries and I, 
I have this, I don't get out of a rut. I am in a rut all the time with stuff. So um, there were these two little tiny thick waffles, not tiny, they were like that big. And it said, she wrote a note on there, it said, toast me. And I thought, oh, how fun. So there is a honey in here. So I could have used this honey. But when I was in Colorado, my brother has kept up the tradition. My mom taught us all how to make jams and jellies and cook. And my brother is an amazing gourmet cook. And he loves making jams and jellies. But because it has sugar, I stopped doing that. Um, but my mom made the best apple butter. My brother is now making the best apple butter. So I picked up a jar of that. And so I had this, oh my gosh, I don't know what was in that waffle. But there was like these nuggety crystally things that were like oh my gosh they were awesome so I fully enjoyed that with my brother's apple jelly or apple butter on top crinkles I know but this is what's still left and you know what was so cool Sylvia had twisted these on there and I know what these are from I think it's Colorado Stitcher I can't remember her name now but she had shared about these for when you stitch these are great they were magnetic clips to hold all that linen tight around your hoop or whatever. I do a hoop. So that was wrapped around there. So that was so fun. But it was such it was such a treat. So all these treats that I had when I was in Colorado working hard, um, I had all these neat treats from my stitching world. So I think for me, because I struggle with a lot of emotional issues, this is, this is my safe zone. This is my safe place. When I'm out working, I think, okay, I'll be home tonight and I can do my own thing. Um, so when I was out in Colorado, that's what mania was for me, my own thing. Sometimes I would go in my guest room where I did those videos and set up my stuff and just stitch and look out the window and just be me. Um, that was important. So for me, dealing with life and all the pressures and all the changes that are going on, because I don't do changes, obviously I have to do changes, my stitching time has been so sweet because of that. So so that was fun. Um, now, take a breath. And um, there is a place in Colorado, it, it's a consignment store, and... Um, I just went there. I was I was leaving. I was going to go to my friends and I was going to go home. And I thought, oh, I wanted to go to the store. Um, and it's called the Moving Store. I think it's like M-O-O-V-I-N-G, um, the Moving Store. And I'd been there before and there was a table that I wish I had picked up because it was gone this time. But there was some fun stuff that I got. One thing I'm going to show you next. I keep thinking I need to stop and take a nap now, but no, I need to finish the video. All these things I haven't shared, but... I got a neat old basket. Now the bottom of it, I have a handkerchief down there, or Kleenex down there because it's a little bit dirty. But I loved this old wood basket and everything. Most things were on sale, so I think I got this for like seven dollars. Um, but it is a neat old basket, and what is inside of it? I like old books. So when I was looking, I just want because I have my front room. If you see my Christmas tour, my front room, I have two big antique pieces, and. I have books on them. So I have some older books that I got from my mom, but I wanted some newer books. So when I looked at these, they were on different shelves, but I thought, let's see. Um, but I thought, oh, I love these. I, I picked them out just because they looked beautiful. Now, the neat thing was, let me send another text because this is why this is why it is hard to do videos during the day, but otherwise, because um, I work on call. Um, otherwise, it's, it's just not going to get done. So I bought these. So the neat thing about them, I bought them. I didn't know. I didn't know the inside story. So the inside story. Look at this. The inside story. This is I think they're both from the 1800s. And it, so it has the name. So I saw the name Stump is my mother-in-law's maiden name. So I thought, I don't know, from Ohio. My husband's family came from Ohio. The lady, when I bought these, she was like, oh, I'm so glad you bought these because it was a special lady. And um, and she said, oh, they're both 
So I saw this too, and I thought, oh, it could have just been made up. Like somebody could have just written that in there. Um, and it says, this is the first book I read. I was nine years old. So is that real? I don't know. I'd like to think so. Um, but I didn't even look. Look at this. It was the same. It was from the same collection. So I just, I thought that was neat. And this lady was saying she, she knew this lady. And this woman had a lot of neat old stuff, had done genealogy, was able to trace her family heritage back to George Washington. And I thought, oh, that's so neat. So I have, even though her family didn't want all this stuff, um, understandable. I, I totally get it. But now I get to treasure it, and I have it. So that was fun. Then I bought another neat uh, fireplace screen that I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to do a wool a long video tomorrow. So those, I should have said that at the very beginning. It was on the top of my notes. But Lisa from Prims on Greenway contacted me and asked me if, oh my gosh, I'm so tired, um, asked me if I would do a wool along with her because she does wool, I do wool. And I was like, yes. But I also knew I was going to be distracted doing all this stuff with my dad. How is that all going to work out? So I was able to do a video chat with her on Sunday. We got things planned out. I am probably tomorrow going to do a video about the, the wool along, introducing it. It's going to be a totally different one. So it will be called hashtag wool along friends. That was, that's the hashtag that we're going to use. Hashtag wool along friends. So the video that I put up, whether I do it tonight or tomorrow, will be introducing so the wool projects that I do. I love wool. This is probably my favorite one and this was a kit. So um, I will share with you more about the video, show you more about my wool projects, books. I got all my wool books out. Um, I will share with you ideas where to get started, how you would want to get started. And I suggest kits because Wool is expensive, and you do not need a lot of it. And um, so let me just say, if you want to be a part of it, please watch my video as soon as I get that up. And Lisa is going to try to put a video up tomorrow as well. Lisa Prims on Greenway. And it's going to be titled, we want to keep all our videos titled the same. Hashtag Wool Along Friends. We both have something fun that we're going to share through this with our viewers. So um, check with us on that if you're interested. And I know a lot of people I asked how many people would be interested. We have a lot of interest. So I asked Lisa what her idea was when she was thinking of this. And she just said she just wanted to get people interested or reinterested in another form of needle art. And so for me, it's awesome because I can't wait to get back into wool. I love wool. So um, there is that. Now, have I covered the bases? No, I haven't covered any bases, but I'm so tired now. Um, and I need to get back to work. So we'll cover some more bases later. Um, and then we'll move along. Someone was asking as well, because I've, I have shared about other devotionals, what what are some other devotionals that I might want to share? So this is my what I call the good stuff. Also, what I'm terming as my journal, my faith journaling. So this is this is where I just share how I how I do life with my God. And as I was so distracted this morning, thinking of all these things that I needed to do, I thought oh, I don't even have a set scripture or something set that I would want to share with you. But on the way home from my trip. I had wanted to stop in Utah. There's a gorgeous place in Utah that I stopped on my way to Colorado. So that would be going uh, north, whatever, northeast. And I thought, oh, I want to stop and I want to do a video there. But no, I was so exhausted on the way home. I just I just wanted to get home and not do a whole video where I was thinking and, and all that. So I, I don't know. I may do something else like that or I may just share with you right now. But I was thinking, well, what would I want to share with you? And it was how I did this trip with all my inabilities, with my anxiety, with my distractedness, with what I feel is my lack of intelligence. I needed to, I needed to 
I needed to do, and for, for, for my, my dad's a very private person. So to honor his privacy, there were, there were the two big projects that I got done and, and it worked. I did them. I, I almost accomplished them and I knew it was going to be a lot. And so I just prayed. Um, this second. Okay. Um, when I knew I was going to make the trip, I prayed. I, prayer to me is just conversation, conversation with God. I can't see him. I can see his creation all around me. I can see his work in me and in other people. Um, our marriage. That's a miracle. So I, I have no doubt there is a God. Um, I have, even though I can't see him, he's even maybe more real because he's inside of me, helping me do everything I do. Um, so I'm not going to get all, I, I can't, I can't explain. I don't know anyone that can, but, um, when I pray, it's just simply conversations with God. Um, simply begging him for help. Um, so what were some notes that I wrote down? So, so my conversations with God before I was leaving, it was, um, I have, a, I have a couple, what I would call common prayers to me, not common, like boring, but common, like I pray these all the time. So one of them is that I ask God to go before me. So whenever I'm going to do something, especially challenging or that I need done right, I just ask God, please go before me. Prepare my father's heart. Prepare my heart and mind. Go before me with all these appointments. I had a lot of appointments that I needed to make, and I needed my father with me. And that's why he's so exhausted, and I'm so exhausted. But I just asked God to go before me, that he would bless the work that I was trying to do to help help my father. And he did. Amazing. And that's why my day got extended one day more, because there was... A person that called me and she says, oh, you're, you're leaving out of town, right? And I said, yep, I'm leaving today. She said, oh, we can fit you in, in an hour. Can you do it? And I was like, yes, yes. So th that delayed my trip one day. Perfect. Perfect. So that's how I know God had his hand in all this. Everything worked out better, not easier, better than I expected. So that's part of just asking God to please go before me. The other thing I like to do is ask God to help me to be a blessing. So that's generally like for the years that I've gone out to visit my parents and then just my dad after my mom was gone, I would just say, Lord, please help me be a blessing in whatever way. So that's another one. And um, the other thing that I have had a, a, a prayer for, for my father, because he took care of my mom up until the last two years of her life. I mean, no, the last two weeks of her life. This is hard. Um, she, we, we encourage my dad. She, she needs to go in a facility because you're going to hurt yourself because she had lots of needs. And so my dad gave up his, he was an outdoorsman. Um, he gave up his outdoorsy things so he could stay with my mom and be with my mom and be her primary caregiver. And, um, so that is just my prayer. It's not that God owes anyone anything. It is just my prayer that God, that, uh, see my nervous tell, that God would honor my father and help him as he ages alone because he, he gave up so much for my mom and I've talked to him about it. He was, it was my, it was my privilege to do that. And so those are, those are just the prayers that I do. And then just each moment, moment by moment, God, please help me, help me with safety. Because, man, the truckers on the way out to Colorado, because I drove, the truckers were like all over the place. So it was kind of weird. But anyway, I just asked God to go before me, protect me, help me to do what I need to do. So that's mostly what I wanted to share. Then when I was, when I was doing some organizing for my dad, I found, I found, um, a book that I've been wanting, My Utmost for His Highest by Oswald Chambers. Now, I I know there's a lot of names. There's, there's tons of devotions out there. There's tons of stuff out there. 
are they really biblical though? So I need to do, because my brain has been so focused on other things, it's like, okay, I'm pretty sure he's theologically accurate as opposed as in, is it totally biblical? Um, pretty darn sure he is. But again, I can go to my resources to find that out, but I have the Holy Spirit within me because I am saved by the grace of Jesus Christ. I have the Holy Spirit within me, so I can pray and ask the Holy Spirit to show me, is this accurate? I can compare it to the Bible. So I had just picked it up, and I was just reading one of the devotions, and it was... <sighs> okay, that's a bit of a surprise. Um, I just opened it looking for a bookmark, and there's a love note. I'm not stopping the video. There's a love note from my mom to my dad. That's my heritage. And I'm so grateful that I'm going to have to end this. But I'm not going to stop it. So also, when I was out there, I had my Bible and I was reading. Look at that. I turned red all of a sudden. And those of you who stay to the end are with me because you love me. <laughs> Uh, Lori Stitching in the Valley had made me awesome stuff and one really hard day I had this and um, I'm not going to show it to you but on, on one side I just had journaling it was just praying um, journaling just asking God to help me help me in all that I needed to do so what I was going to share with you <laughs> that was a good surprise it was just like a surprise a surprise a surprise um, so now I can't even read but I take what I read and I compare it with the Word of God. And I'm going to have to blow my nose in a minute. So what I was going to share was, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. That was, that was part of the devotional, but that's also an amazing verse. So that's Matthew 6, 33, I think. Um, but there we go. <laughs> unexpected ending but um my mom loved to leave notes for people and I have found her notes and I'm gonna have to send that one to my dad um in that because I knew uh he wouldn't want to to miss that so thank you um God bless you guys may you choose joy nevertheless <laughs> and I'm sorry I need to blow my nose God bless you guys goodbye